Hello, my name is Christopher, and today we are going to continue the series on home automation from scratch to where we install stuff and get things running. And we are using Proxmox to run everything. And then we will eventually get to the home automations and the pizzazz. Um, so uh, today we will be installing HomeBridge on Portainer. It makes it to where you can install non HomeKit certified devices bridge them to the home app and uh and i use it to uh a bridge go govi and um their centers their lights things like that to my home app and um today we will get started in doing that and see you there So we're going to start out on the Homebridge uh, homepage on our website, and I'll have a link in the description for their website to go to it. It's homebridge.io. I'll just change this over, and you can see my home automation is working in the background. <laughs> okay. Um. So HomeKit support is for the impatient. That means that non-HomeKit devices uh, that are non-certified can work with the home app so um the popular ones are ring nest nest cameras tp link q decons belkin wemo yq and unify protect i would recommend with ring and unify protect to run it on scripted i do have a video on running scripted getting it installed on portainer in the last uh, few videos and now um does work with uh you can control your devices with siri once you link it in the home app uh simple interface it does have a pretty simple interface um so you can install it uh on mac os windows 10 raspberry pi linux Docker, which we'll be using today in Portainer, um, and any other platforms, not sure what those are. So it does recommend Ra Raspberry Pi, but we're gonna install it on Docker Compose, uh, which is Portainer Stacks. That's how I've installed it. We're gonna go up here to GitHub. This is where the development happens of it. And you can see the change log of everything that happens in it. Um, you can see the version is 1.6.1. Your version might be different than this one. Um, so they walk over the Siri integration when you start in the home app. They do have the community support and Discord and Reddit. So you can go join those if you need any help. Um, so they go over the installation, adding it to iOS. You go on the home app. You press the little plus button up top. Then you say add accessory. You scan the QR code. Sometimes uh, you can also go into the uh, the not except uh, not accessory or not found or something like that up there in the top. And uh, you can go and see all the list of each device and click on them and install them that way too. Um, so does work with interacting with devices, uh, the plugin development, which that's the whole thing about it is having plugins where it opens up functionality. So we're going to go over to our retainer and we're going to start it out at home on the retainer. We're going to go to local right here. I do have a video installing retainer. So you can go over to that video, check it out, and then come back um, if you don't have Portainer installed. So stacks. Um, so we're going to go over here to add stack because we have no stacks. We're going to need to add a stack, and that's going to be the home bridge. We're going to name the stack home bridge stack. Then we're going to go over to our uh just uh our guest that i made um it's public and i'll have a link in the description for it i'll just copy this 
and then we're going to go back to Portainer. We're still on the create stack and we gave it a stack name, the web editor, and let's paste what we just copied over in the gist. Um, so it's got the Docker Compose version, it's got the services underneath that will run. We're going to only run one service, which is going to be the Homebridge container. We're going to get the image from Docker Hub, and it's going to be the, uh, the OSNU and then Homebridge, and then we're going to pull the latest version. We're going to set it to restart always. That means that even if you stop it, it will restart. Um, so network mode is very important. It's on host and that's to get the MDNS to work correctly. Um, so we're going to set up a volume. We're going to mount it on the local side, which would be in your Proxmox VM in your portainer. Um, then we're going to mount it locally on the, um, we're going to mount it in the container, uh, at Homebridge. Then these two are going to sync up. And now we're going to set some logging and then we're going to log it to a JSON file. We're going to set some uh, max sizes so the JSON file don't get out of hand because that can happen if you got too many logs. We're going to go down here to deploy the stack actions right here. Okay, we're going to deploy it. This could take a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go in the stack. We're going to go to container. Right underneath here. We're inside of the stack, but you can go over here and you can edit this anytime you want. Then you can go down here to update stack and then you can repull all the images if you want to, too. Uh, so let's go and since you're using the latest tag, if you want to update to the latest version again, you will have to repull the image to get the latest on that since the tag doesn't change. So let's go to container. And see down here it did starts it did set some environment variables. Um Set up the volume. Looks good so far. So let's go on the logs, see what it's doing. The home bridge is running on this port right here. And you can see it's loading one platform. It's got the home kit app up. The number. The Homebridge UI is listing on 8581. Let me just copy that real quick. And then there's no plugins found. It looks to be up and running. So we're going to go over here and then we're going to just duplicate this tab real quick. We're going to go up here and then this will be your IP address that's running Portainer. You're going to just uh, put in 8581. And I believe this is run on HTTPS. Nope, it's not, maybe. Okay, it's just running on HTTP. So it's listening on the port 80. So let's get started right here. I'm going to just put in a username, Big Bear, and just do a simple password. And then once you do that, you're going to put in the username, password, and firm password. Make sure these two are the same on the password. Okay, now we're going to go down here to create account. It says that setup procedure is complete. And, and open dashboard. Okay, now you can see a really nice log right here. You can see all the logs that are happening. You can see that we just added a new user. You can see some info down here. And we're running on Ubuntu. 
um, you can see the QR code that you're going to use. Uh, if you want to add it, uh, the bridge to HomeKit, um, but I recommend adding each single device in accessory mode if available. Um, the HomeBridge UI needs an update. So we're going to just update it real quick to show you uh, how you update the UI. Just goes in here, creates the backup for it. It's pretty simple. It Okay, now it says restart HomeBridge. You will get that quite often. If you make start certain changes to HomeKit or anything in here, plug in or anything, you do need to restart the HomeBridge. So let's restart the HomeBridge. Okay, showing that the HomeBridge UI is restarting. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, now it's back up. Didn't take too long to do that, but that will happen. You 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 will need to do that frequently if you use this any. So we can go in here and we can type in um, different uh, plugins that we want. Always look for verified up here because they're they're uh, normally better plugins. I'm not putting down the other ones, but the verified is normally what I install. Um, everybody puts their time into the plugins, but I feel like the verified is more trusted. I haven't looked into it that much, but feel like that is. And you can go just, um, just install it right here. And you can see that it's installing in the background. Um, this runs on, um, uh, NPM. Uh, to install the packages uh, to the plugins and you can just continue you're going to put in your your Gobi email address and password this is pretty neat um, to be able to have a Gobi integration on the cloud side you can go over here if you want to um, you can install ring so homebridge ring um, and then you just link your ring account to it just close that out and then you can install unify and when you type up here you, you, you type the uh, the name of it and then you press return or enter because it doesn't automatically populate on the search so you can see there's a few um, verified ones there's for the camera motion I've played with this one I believe yeah this one right here we're just install it real quick and um, you just put in your controller address that's going to be your unified protect address wherever that is um, controller username I recommend create a local unify account um, with admin permissions probably I think that's what he wants you can also go down here and you can go to the github and you can see um the documentation and uh it's using ffmpeg in the background to transpile the video um i think somewhere down here it talks about uh creating a unify user okay you can use your account credentials three two factor is not supported so he strongly recommends creating a local user so he doesn't say if it needs admin but i'm sure it does so um and then you can go over here to the home bridge uh config this will populate more when you put more username and passwords in for your different uh plugins and then you can go over here to save and you can also download this and then you can also restore it if you have backups you can go over here, you can see your terminal and this button right here. You can go see your start script and that will be a startup.sh. So whatever you want to run, you can run uh, apt-get in it, it looks like. Install your uh, packages from apt-get. Pretty neat. Now you can go and restart the container. It's restarting the Docker container now. Um, this takes too long, I'll pause it.
Okay. Didn't take too long to restart the container. Um, back up, running. Um, now, the Homebridge settings, you can change your MDNS advertiser, um, Avahi, and then System Resolved. That's experimental. I wouldn't recommend using that right now. Um, COE. Not sure if I'm just feeling, uh, saying that right. So you can change your network interfaces. So you can change it to ETHO. I'm going to change it to ETHO. Okay, now you can turn on debug mode, um, turn, turn on insecure mode for enable accessory control. Keep accessories and uninstall plugins, environment variables set. Um, a reset. Uh, if you have an issue, I guess you can unpair the bridges and cameras, TVs, external accessories with this button right here. You can reset the home bridge accessories and remove the single cache accessory and remove all cached accessories and then force service restart. This, this action to force the HP service, uh, service to do a full restart. And then um, now you're going to go over to user accounts. You can see our user accounts. You can set up two factor. So that's about it in there. Now you can go over here and view the logs. This is really neat to be able to view the logs in there. You can go up to status, go back to home page, plugins, accessories. Th this will build up when you add, when you when you add more accessories in the plugins. Um, so you'll be able to see that. You can add a room. You can toggle the hidden, um, toggle the layout log. Just, you can add a test room. Okay, just, and it, it adds a room just like what um, the home app does. And um, I believe you can Change some things like Fahrenheit, uh, memory, not much settings there. See the uptime. You can also move these around. It's pretty neat. Make a layout for it. You can go ahead and make this more compact, I guess. It's pretty neat. Um, Put that back the way it was. Okay, that's pretty much it on getting Homebridge running. Make sure you, when you change anything to do with the plugins, you restart. At, and uh, when it needs to restart, I think it goes and pulses this restart button. If I remember correctly, um, I like to always make sure that the Homebridge is up to date. So make sure you keep up with the updates. Because they could be for, for security. Um, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching. So today I just showed you how to install Homebridge on Portainer. Makes to where you can get your non-HomeKit certified devices that will probably not get certified uh, onto the Homebridge. And then you will bridge it through accessory mode or the bridge uh, to the Home app. I would recommend accessory mode as much as possible because it bridges just one device and doesn't kilometrate every device into each other. But um, some, some devices don't support that, some plugins, I mean. Um, so uh, it's a really uh, stable product. It's open source, so you can go on and look at the code. A little bit about this is I'm going over um, a setting up a smart home from scratch. And um, I'll go over the installing software to installing the home automations later. And uh, if you like the series, subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks.